We've got Dylan Boy versus The Knowledge. This is Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is, the show that pitches TV's best love of antiques experts against each other in an all-out battle for profit. Let's make hay while that sun shines. Each week, one pair of dueling dealers will face a different daily challenge. I've got an heavy profit here. <laughs> putting their reputations on the line. Who's there? They'll give you the insider's view of the trade. Wow. Along with their top tips and savvy secrets. That could present problems. Showing you how to make the most money. Ready for battle. From buying and selling. Get in there. <laughs> Coming up, there's foul play afoot. Uh, I have to say that uh, I think he's playing mind games with me. Danny tries to beat Eric at his own game. I'd like to show him that I can get some good porcelain. And they're straight talking in the selling. Oh, very different. The main difference is mine's better. Yes. <laughs> this is Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. Nice to see you. A warm welcome, viewers, to today's match. We're gearing up for what's looking like a busy day on the pitches of Newark Antiques Fair in Nottinghamshire. Our premiership players limbering up for an almighty kick em out of the collectibles. So, before the whistle blows, let's meet the captains. First up is a lean, mean bargaining machine. He's got over a billion matches under his belt and is still as fit as a butcher's dog. Known as the porcelain prancer, it's Wickham's own, Eric the Knowledge Knowles. I'm just determined. Yes, and up against Eric is a young hopeful bursting with vigour and vim. He knows nothing about the offside rule but doesn't care, as he can dribble deals with the best of them. It's the Northamptonshire Annihilator, Danny Delboy Sebastian. What do you got for me? And as we toss the coin on today's tussle, our tackling twosome are risking £750 of their own prize money. Their aim, to strike as many profit goals as possible and win this match of the merchandise. With all the proceeds going to good causes, of course. So, Eric Knowles and Danny Sebastian, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Well, here we are. What? Morning, Eric. Uh, morning. We arrive in total darkness, but now the sun has just sort of beckoned from beyond the horizon. It has popped its head out. It certainly has. So, you, you've been here before? Quite familiar with this territory, to be mm -hmm. honest. So have you. Yes, yes, yes on, on several occasions, yeah. Yes, so what's yeah. your approach? Well, I normally uh, take the A1 and I come off on the A46. <laughs> and <laughs> Well, because it's such a huge fair, uh, you've got to be, you know, uh, methodical. It is a fair, I would say, for big boys, because I know today I've got to try and do some big spending. If you buy big, there's always a chance that you're going to make a big bigger profit. profit. Exactly. Doesn't always work. No, does it? it doesn't. No. So what about yourself? I mean, you're, you're no stranger here, are you? No, I'm not. I'm not I know where, where a few people are in, the, in in this place. So um, hopefully they've got some good gear for me. Yeah. You know, I'll be going straight to them. It's just another day at the office for you, isn't it? Well, you yeah. could say that without blowing your own trumpet. You could <laughs> do really. Well, listen, <laughs> just, you, just you be you. Try and come out of your shell and just you know take them on. You know, because you know we're both big boys, aren't we? We are uh, definitely okay. that. <laughs> Catch you later. So, our big boys bound off into the fair, hoping to fill their booty bags with bargains. Morning. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hello. All right. Yeah. Each of them is on familiar ground at this fair, but Del Boy seems particularly well connected. So, how does Eric feel about that? Danny has gone off to meet sort of specific dealers because, I mean, this is his playground. This is where he comes on a regular basis. But um, the secret is just, is just to keep going. And, uh, and you know, it's, it was one of these, these areas that's just so much to take in. So you've just got to, you know, relax, take, go with the flow and crack on. Or to put it another way, keep calm and carry on. But while Danny knows a lot of people here, how's he going to use that to his advantage? 
I've only got one strategy here today, and that is to try and get a good deal out of some of these dealers. I've worked these fairs for years, so I know a lot of the people here. About time I got a favour back. Cruising through the fair like a visiting royal, Danny is launching a true charm offensive. How are you? Hey, good. nice to see you. Thank you. Look yeah. up, How are you? And he's got a plan of where he's heading first. We're in the rich department here, not where I want to be. I want to be where the casuals are, where the price is a little bit cheaper. Knowing the lie of the land is helpful as Danny quickly homes in on his first target, an industrial cage locker, and he's not wasting any time. How much is this, mate? 22 quid, my hand's ready. That will do. Thank you very much. I like that. Well, Danny's set a new personal best for his fastest purchase ever. Right, let's take a look at that again. And in position there. Nice little bit of dribbling. Yes, the old one-two and a beautiful clean shot there. Across to a gentleman's handshake and it's an early bar for the Northamptonshire Annihilator. Wonderful. 10, 20 and 2. Much obliged to you, thank you. Welcome. This is a lovely little galvanised locker unit. I'd say it's probably about... 1960s, 1970s, probably used in a school or maybe in a swimming pool. Today, industrial is very, very in vogue. Everybody wants it, and basically, it can be used anywhere. It's just trendy, it's in, it's quirky. It cost me £22. I'm going to try and double up, maybe even treble up on this piece. Definitely something that Eric the Knowledge Knowles would not buy. Whether or not that's a good thing is yet to be seen, but at least he's got a plan. As across the market, Eric doesn't. And he's been meandering quite aimlessly, it appears. I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, they, these things have got a habit of appearing, and I've said it before, with almost like a red light fl flashing over the top of it. So, while Eric goes in search of flashing red lights, Del Boy is dealing at a breakneck speed and has picked up a vintage shop display model. What's the best price on it? 80 quid. I'll have a deal at that. 80 quid. Lovely. I've bought this little fiberglass boy. I mean, it must be about 1960s and probably even 1970s because he's made of fiberglass. Um, I, I do like this Afro caribbean type sort of uh, figurine let's not get confused here this young chappy here is not a blackamoor blackamoors were sculptures or figurines depicting field workers or slaves usually african but this ain't one he's just a young lad who's you know he's got his hat on he's got a big smile on his face he's happy as larry he's going up the farm to go and pick some provisions for tea but it's a great decorative piece you know, he's in relatively good condition. There's a little bit of dirt, there's a little bit of marks about him. We're not bothered about that. I bought him right money, and I think there's a healthy profit to be made on this piece. So, Del Boy is up two items to his opponent's none. Across the fair, Eric is continuing his search for that elusive first buy. It's not there, but I know it's here. I just know it's here, so I'm not daunted, and I'm not desperate. I'm just determined. Yes, Eric, ever positive, showing that commitment and perseverance is essential in this game. Danny, however, well, he's just relying on his mate traits. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Not so bad, is it? How much are them ladders? Fifteen pounds. I'll tell you what. That's a bargain. Ooh, do I knock it down a little bit? No, because it was 20 to anybody else. Give us 12 quid, then. Go on, 20 hands. <laughs> That's easy enough, isn't it? I better go and check them now. Shall I go and inspect them now? They're fine, they're fine. Oh, these are nice. They're even better. Bargain of the day. I think, I'll tell you what, it definitely is. I said I was going to get a deal today, and that is precisely what I've got. I've gone and got myself a lovely set of ladders. To be quite honest with you, I didn't even know they was lovely until right about now, because I bought them without even looking at them, without even inspecting them. But now I have inspected them, they're great. They've got a lovely patina. Generally, you've got a bit of rope that comes across, but these haven't. These have got a lovely metal bracket which just stabilizes them up they cost me 12 pound i'm gonna four times my money on these i'd say they're probably around who knows really they could be like 60s 70s 80s but they're very commercial everybody in shops nowadays they want these just to use as a prop just to use as a set of shelves i'm happy as larry 
There you have it. Buying blind can pay off. And the vintage stepladders raised Del Boy three buys above Eric, who is still searching for his big red light first buy. But what ho? Oh, could this be it? Is Nolsey finally ready to splash out on this ice bucket? Hello there. I presume it's that would, that would take a nice bottle of champagne at one stage. That actually came from France, so I can do 38 on that one. 38 pounds, you, uh, we've got a done deal. Well, I just bought myself a Continental Pewter ice bucket. Date around about 1900, very Art Nouveau in style. Could be made in France, that's where he bought it, but it could have been made in Germany as well. Um, either way, for 38 pounds, I think that is um, quite a good start to the day. And so the Iceman cometh into this competition, picking up his first item. Just as the halftime whistle blows. Now, while our players pull up their socks and suck on some oranges, let's see who's been defending well and who's on a yellow card. From a £750 budget, Eric has had a tough first half, scoring one item for £38, leaving him £712 for the rest of the match. Danny has been defending well, three buys costing £114, leaving him with £636 to play with. How's it going? Not so bad. I wish I could say the same. And I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, you know, that's me. Um, I've been having a terribly slow start because there is so much ground to cover here that I'm completely dazed. Oh, you bamboozled by it all. I'm having a great day, you know. Bamboozled. Bamboozled by it all, are you? Bamboozled. <laughs> I'm having a great day, Eric. I've got oh. some, some lovely lots. Oh, wonderful. Some great things. I've seen oh. a lot of your stuff here as oh, well. Oh, fantastic for you. Listen, um, just carry on what you're doing and don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Listen. Hey. See ya. See ya. No oh dear, it seems Danny really is getting under Eric's skin today. I think he's playing mind games with me. I'm not totally convinced that he's been buying at uh, a rapid rate of knots. Um, in fact, what he's actually done, it's going to work against him because he's, he's buoyed me up. He's, he's got me going for it big time. Well, as it goes, Eric, Danny's not playing mind games. He's actually been spending money. But spurred on by Del Boy's boasting, the knowledge has taken possession of a burning desire to score more items which may explain his interest in this lighter. I'm always attracted to anything that is connected with the beautiful game, uh, because I, I'm a man of two teams, uh, tribal I'm Burnley, and adopted I'm Wiccan Wanderers. But I'm also interested in these early lighters. I'm going to have a stab at that, because you, you could say that I'm buying a striker who's a striker. I know, don't switch off, it doesn't get any worse than this. We apologize for the interruption, but it did get worse. We will resume the program shortly. And you rejoin us after Eric has bought his footballer lighter for £50. First of all, he's uh, made out of uh, a, a spelter. It's like a zinc alloy, but he's been, he's been decorated in such a way that it simulates bronze. Date-wise on this, probably around about 1930, 1935. When it comes to the buyer, well, it's got dual appeal because something like this is going to obviously appeal to a, a football memorabilia collector, but also a lighter collector. Having secured an item with several sales options, Mr. Knowles is fighting back. Yes, viewers, the wait is over. Well, Eric's wait is over. It's over there, and it's a paperweight by the looks of it. Quite a rare paperweight. Uh, we mm. can't find any for sale anywhere. Uh, what, what's the money on that, as a matter of interest? That one, I'm sort of looking for about £65 for it, because of its rarity. I see. And it's a nice size, nice colours. If I offered you 50 50 would buy it. Yes. Oh, OK. Thanks Let's give it a go. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. Eric picks up his paperweight, but will it prove to be a heavyweight profit maker? Now, over the years, I, I have handled hundreds of paperweights. And the best ones tend to be French from the 1840s. Um, Baccarat, Cliché, Saint Louis. These are the, 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 the big names. I've never seen a paperweight with London 1951 before. Sometimes you'll buy something and it's all, all told on the label. The thrill is doing your own research. So uh, I'll see what I can come up with, because I want to know who made this. And that paperweight lifts a great burden from Eric's shoulders as he catches up to his rival three buys each. Now, Danny's voyage of discovery has led him to pick up a couple of items that seem quite appropriate for the one they call... Gel Boy! 
These are so cool. Nowadays, everyone's sort of having a little bar in their house. This is Kushti. This is a late 20th century boat bar. Quirky, nice, sort of thing that probably Del Boy would have in his house. But it's just all there. There's little bits of, you know, this just little bits of the trimming that's coming away. But to be quite honest with you, you're always going to find that. As long as these are being used, you're always going to get a little bit of damage. Same goes here, but the nice thing is at least these lugs are still in, whereas if the lugs weren't in, you'd probably have to take the string away. And it's not just the bar Danny has his eye on. Anyone got a bar, you want an ice bucket. This little ice bucket, I mean, pineapple, brilliant. The top's there, all the leaves are there. Great thing about these things, what you've always got to look out for is the glass liner inside. If you've got that, you're cooking with gas. Happy that he could get a lovely, jubbly profit from the boat, bar and ice bucket, Danny does a double deal with the camera shy store holder. I'm quite happy. £145 paid for the pair. Actually, that's a pineapple, Danny. Still, this kids duo pushed Danny back into a 5-3 lead. But Eric is quick to reclaim some ground when he picks up a vintage glass bowl and stand for £40. So what I've just bought is a French uh, glass dish in a, uh, a rote iron stand. What I'd like them to be, I'd like this to be by Dome of Nancy, and I'd like the base to be by a man called Edgar Brandt, but they're not. Um, that's why I was able to buy it for uh, £40 uh, and not the best part of £800 to £1,000. But it looks the part, it's cheerful, it's colourful, um, and it is from La Belle France. So um, I think anything that cheers anybody up today is well worth having. So Eric cheers himself up with his cheap and cheerful ball and stand. He really is the undisputed champion when it comes to glassware and pottery. So what's Danny doing sniffing around his territory? What have you got for me? Listen, see these here, they are a stonking pair of daisies. I'll tell you what it is. I'm up against the great knowledge knolls. I'd like to show him that I can get some good porcelain too. Now, I know these are Royal Dalton. I'm sure they're a winner. You sure they're a winner or are you sure they're a wonner? A winner. They're a winner, half <laughs> are, are they a winner at a wonner? No, I can I'd, I'd be losing too much on them. 150. Tell you what, I'll meet you in the middle. This is my last bid. 130. 130. Give us that hand. That's a bold move from Del Boy. 130 pounds for the vases. And having encroached into Eric's territory, Danny decides he's spent up and heads to the dressing room. Nolsey still has money to spend, and it may be late in the day, but he's finally got a plan. Uh, what I've done, I've come back to where I started very early this morning because the facts were that people were still unpacking. Um, so I'm now back, they're fully unpacked, and I've just got a feeling that there's something in there that's waiting for me. And sure enough, he quickly homes in on a nice and shiny cocktail ensemble. American, it did look American. American. With We've got the cups quite separately, but I'll do you do it. Yeah. What we need to do now is find a smart bar. Somewhere. Yeah, well, exactly, a very, a very smart bar as well. Yeah. Uh, somebody, what I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm looking for a girl who's working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. <laughs> That's right. You know. Don't, don't you want them, Eric? Yeah, I do like the cocktail set, but I, you know, I, you really do need them on a tray to really set yeah. them off, don't you? And I'm just wondering what you've got in the way of trays, and we could work something into a deal. OK. This, one's, right. this one's pretty good. It does it well. can, we, uh, can we give it a try? I mean, let's see if they all fit on. So if you put that on there, you put that in the centre, that goes in the middle. Looks like, it looks like serious dosh to me. How, how, how painful will that be? Together, complete. Yeah. A whole lot. 250. How's that sound? Do it quick. Oh, look at the pain on his okay. face. That's a big spend, but you, you, it's a class act, isn't it? Yep, it certainly is. Goodbye, old friends. Goodbye. Yes, I like being a Colada. Get caught in the rain. Yes, that's a whopping £250 for the tray, shaker and glasses, making it the biggest spend of the day.
Well, if you're looking for something that epitomizes the Art Deco age, then look no further at my cocktail set. Noel Coward said it was the age of laughter and cocktails. And um, all right, I paid good money for this, but you know, I think it's worth every penny. With the right person, I'm gonna make a profit. And with that, the buying whistle is blown, the pitches are cleared, and our exhausted experts can rest. But only momentarily. While they do, let's analyze their purchasing prowess. From a £750 budget, Eric had a very slow start, but bought five items and spent an impressive £428. Danny bought six items, but spent less, £389. So let's see what they make of each other's hauls. Well, I've been thinking big time, but everything I've bought today is going to fit in the boot of my car. Um, but when it comes to the real big time, I've got to say, done it, my boy. Um, I think you, you you get the prize. What for? Big boys' toys. But also, I've got a, a question. I, I really need to know, you know, the cage that you've got there. What on earth do you keep in that? Well. What do you want to keep in it? Do you want to put shirts in it in a shop? Do you want to put books in it in an house? That's just adaptable. I see. What okay. do you put in that? Well, you put something nice and bubbly in that. Oh, it's a champagne bucket. It's a champagne bucket. Yes. Quite nice. What about me bar? I love your bar. Well, if it's got the knowledge, knows recognition, that's put a great beam on, on your my face. Bucket. It has. Hey, look at that. Here's um, a lovely cocktail set. I paid good money for it, though. I paid very good money for it. But if you want to best... It's a good item. You've got to pay for it. Absolutely. And were you conscious when you bought your pineapple that that features in Fools and Horses every, virtually every episode? I wasn't, actually. Well, there you go. It was subliminal or whatever. Yes? Mm. It, was, it was there in your subconscious. What about my lovely Dalton pair here? Danny, I don't How did you miss them? I, no, well, Danny... Forgive me, I didn't miss them. Oh, OK. The reason I didn't buy them is that that one has been restored on the top. You see, when, if you're a ceramics man, you're looking at glazes, and that's very glassy, that's very polished, and that's slightly matte. And that's a warning sign. Now, look, I don't want to put the dampers on it because they're, they're both lovely vases. They're Dalton Lambert, they're very arts and crafts. They've got size, but the collectors, they like they're absolute perfection. But if nothing else, I think we've uh, we finished today on a very much on a high note, don't you? Absolutely. Okay. Go for it, kid. Uh, you, you tricked me earlier. No, no, no. Grab him. <laughs> Good luck. And you too. So our experts travel back to their respective residences to prepare for the rocky road that lies ahead. Yes, buying is the easy part in this game of two halves as our two teams must now play the home leg, creating maximum wealth for the charities of their choice. Down in his Wickham base, Eric is ready for a rub down. Well, I'm slowly recovering from that trek all around the antique fair. It's massive. Uh, do you know, I mean, as a bonus, I think I've probably lost about half a stone. But here is what I came up with, and in all fairness, these four items are a bit neither in nor there from a money point of view, because they were all around about £50 a piece. The big money, however, is on the cocktail shaker and the associated plated uh, uh, goblets, you might call them. And, of course, it's all set off by that wonderful stand. Um, so it is a marriage, but by jingo, it's a marriage made in heaven. Doesn't it look fantastic? Uh, and I'm told that the the red Bakelite version is the rarest. It comes in other other colours. So I'm going to have to find a, a big spender. I'm thinking big London hotel, maybe. I've got to make sure that it's in perfect working order. So I'm going to dig out my old cocktail recipe book and um, give it a try. Ah, such dedication. And Eric's also got to find buyers for his champagne bucket, football striker lighter, paperweight, and bowl and stand. Danny is warming up in Wellingborough. What a great day at the fair I had. I bought the steps and I bought the industrial lockers. Now, these are great retail pieces, and I don't think I'm going to have a problem selling them at all. My fiberglass child. Now, I think he's absolutely fantastic. When I bought him, 
I had somebody in mind for him. I know a person who's got a Caribbean restaurant, and he's going to look fabulous situated in there. Me two Dalton vases. Really, really nice. Good size, great condition. Is it? My colleague Eric Knowles has told me there's definitely restoration being done on this. Me boat bar and me pineapple ice box. Great pieces. I really love it. Screams retro. But sometimes a bit too quirky can be a problem selling. But I know once I do get the right buyer, I'm going to get the right profit. Our professional profit pursuers must now get their noses to the grindstones, their pedals to the metal, and their powers of persuasion to the max as they target buyers for their goodies. And they know that no deal is made until a hand is shaken and the money is taken. First to kick off is Eric, who's travelled to the capital with his sporty lighter. Well, I'm in central London to meet sporting memorabilia guru Gary Ashburn. I'm hoping that he's going to take a shine to my striker. So, will the lighter that cost him £50 score a profit, or will Eric hit an own goal? Oh, there's, wow. there's the man. Well, that's certainly different, isn't it? In it, as that they is say. That is very different, yeah. Have you ever seen Almost. anyone like it before? To tell you the truth, I've, I don't think I've ever seen one, no. Oh, you're it's, the great uh, footballing memorabilia man as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it, it's really great, isn't it? Hits all the boxes, retro, vintage, you know, yeah. reminisce, nostalgia. You can just see someone who's a really big football fan, you know, having that sort of pride of place on their yeah. desk, something different. Yeah. It, it's it's quite rare, but it's a lighter, isn't it, as it well? It is. This, yeah. is, this, is, oh, what, course, this is what they call the wand. You would have fabric on that and that would be doused with flammable liquid. Touch it against the, the flint, it ignites. What do you think? About 75 quid cash. Ooh, I'll tell you what, 110. I'll tell you what, we'll do a deal. I know you need a new raincoat. Uh, yeah. We'll do a deal, I'll give you 100 quid all in. 100 quid. All right, well done. Good man. He shoots, he scores. Eric's early goal brings in a profit of 50 pounds and makes it 1-0. Well, that was a nice bit of business because I managed to actually double my money. So, um, in more ways than one, I think in footballing terms, I've uh, got myself a bit of a result. So, with Eric running up the league table, Danny is keen to even things up. I'm in Wellingborough to see Jody, the owner and the head chef of the Wellingborough restaurant. I've brought my fiberglass child with me. I just hope she loves this boy as much as I do. The figure cost Danny £80, but will he be able to cook up a profit from Caribbean restaurant owner Jody? We can see he's of Caribbean descent. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you've got a Caribbean restaurant here. Yeah. I think, you know, this is the home for him. Yeah, I like him. He looks good. Well, where would you put him? What would you do with him? Well, I think if we could get some way to maybe for him to be handing out menus or something at the front door or something like that. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. I think Even, that'd be um, really good. I, I was, uh, how about £220? Um, I like him, but I was thinking a bit lower. £100 lower. Oh, no. No, you, you, that's a low blow. That is a low blow. <laughs> Was that below the belt? Definitely. <laughs> How about 150? I knew you was going to come somewhere around that sort of figure. I knew you was. 185. And I think I'm being absolutely fair with you now. Come on, Danny. I think 150. 175. 155, we've got a deal. 158. Come on, Danny. Pounds make, <laughs> pounds make profit in this game. All right, 158. That will do me. <laughs> that will do me. Some pretty tough negotiating means that Jody takes the figure and Danny walks away with a spicy profit of 78 pounds. Over in London, Eric is rocketing on to his next sale. He's found a swanky hotel interested in having a look at his cocktail ensemble. He's sent him back 250 pounds, but will that be too punchy for bar manager Bart? I'm feeling as though I've done a little bit of time travel here, and I'm, I'm back in the 30s, emphasised by my cocktail shaker. Beautiful. Bakelite, I'm assuming? Uh, Bakelite, yeah. Red is the rarest. It's silver plate, American. I think the golden age for cocktails with this type of shaker is sort of 1930 to maybe 1950. 
So the question is, is this an ensemble that you think would do credit and add to the ambiance of this, uh, this room? I think it would. We do quite a few masterclasses here, where the guests are actually shaking their own cocktails. It would be very nice to use it for that. So it's all about the money. My guideline for this was £450, but... OK. You probably have a budget. I'm willing to do 300 on it. 350 is my sort of bottom marker. 350 it is. 350. Good luck. Lovely. Eric shakes on the place and spirits away a profit of £100 for the cocktail set. Well, that was my biggest spend, and uh, I knew that I was never going to be able to double my money. So it was very nice, actually, just to make a three-figure profit. Tanny is now lacking two one behind, but he's hoping to overtake with a cheeky double sale of his ladder and cage on his home ground of Wellingborough. I've sold my first item. I've now got these two items, which I'm going to try and sell to a florist that I know. It'd be nice if she takes both bits. Hi, you cat. Hello, how are you? Good. I'm good, thank you. What have I got for you? Well, I see you've got a few sets of steps in here, but does it matter, does it, in this no, industry? No, no. There's always room for another pair of set of steps, I think. And I need to make a um, ribbon rack, so I could use it as a ribbon rack if I... Ribbon rack? Yeah, I could put some holes in here, a little bit of a rod, a couple of ribbons on it, and, like, mount it on the wall. Oh, that would look fantastic. And I've also got this little locker, originally probably used in a school or a swimming baths. But as you know, nowadays, all this industrial is very, very in vogue. Is this something you'd be interested in, these couple of bits? Well, I think so. I think I could probably use that if I mount it on the wall and have it as storage rather than having it as a standing unit. So it could kind of, like, sit on the wall to, like, display vases and things. What about the ladders? I mean, would you, I mean, would you have a go on both of them, or...? It depends how much you want to charge for them, to be fair. I'll go straight in at 100 if you want for the pair. I think I'm looking at more 70 for the pair, to be honest. Cock I've got cat. quite a lot of ladders here, to be fair. Can you do 78? 76.50. God, you're an hard woman. <laughs> you, you are hard. But I, I think you're, you're, you're also very fair, cat. And um, I'll shake your hand at that. There you go. Yes, Danny sells both items and makes a total profit of £42.50 on the cage locker and ladder. And that double sale means he's sold more items than his rival. But remember, this game's all about profit. So, who is in the lead at the midway point? Eric has sold two of his items, making a profit of £150. Danny has sold three items and is behind, with only £120.50 to show for it. Both our experts have three items left to sell, and Danny has some catching up to do. Luckily, he's up next, heading to Weedon to see antique dealer Mark. Now, he wanted to play Eric in his own game and bought a pair of restored vases. So the question is, will he be able to sell them? And will he get back anything close to the £130 that he paid for them? I'm going to play Eric at his own game now. I've bought these two lovely bits of Royal Dalton. It's cost me a lot of money. It's my biggest purchases. Let's just hope Mark gives me a healthy profit. How are you, Mark? I'm very well, Danny. How are you? G great, thank you. These pair of antique Royal Dalton vases that I'm bringing here today... Build them up, Danny. Build them up. It's going to complement this place. Is it really? I'm, I mean, I know you love arts and crafts, the Art Nouveau movement, and there is a little bit of damage, I think, um, on one of them, yeah. but they've been professionally restored. Let's have a look at that. Absolutely. Now? I mean, I, quite, I like arts and crafts, and I don't usually buy that much arts and crafts pottery, but these are a good size. Great size, lovely green bit, and brown I'm a little mottled. bit put off even though they've been restored and restored really well. But it's really quite obvious in the colour, so you notice immediately. Yes, yes. But will. it's all down to price. So what kind of money are you asking for? I'd How be much? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'd be happy for 250 Would you? For the pair. I really wouldn't want to be giving much more than 160 for them. Mark, these are fine antiques. You're sticking your neck out at <laughs> 250 Danny. I mean, honestly. Well, can we say 220 I'd really want to be under two with them. 195 then. Give us your hand. There you go, Danny. Thank you very much. Oh, lovely, Mark. Thank you. So, despite the vases being restored, Danny makes a decent profit of £65. Now, just how proud of himself is he? 
Well, Mr. Eric Knowledge Nold, it's not only you who can sell porcelain. I made a tidy profit there. Well, that's definitely someone who's happy with himself. So the competition is hotting up. Next, both Danny and Eric head to London with their rather contrasting ice buckets. First, old Nolsey takes his Art Nouveau champagne bucket to Chelsea antiques dealer Romulo. You're saying £60 could be the right price for you. So we yeah. want to shake on £60. Eric shakes and makes a swift £22 profit. And so from classic to kitsch. Danny is also on a bar crawl with his ice bucket that cost him £25. He's in Peckham, South London, and obviously Del Boy needs to find a bar with a perfect ambience for his retro pineapple. And to me a lemon, he's only gone and done it. Tristan. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Mm, Tristan looks up for it too. So what is actually going on here? Um, so, it's called Little Nan's Bar. It's all based on, like, a Nan's living room, like my own Nan's. I'm a lover of kitsch and retro and all that sort of period. It's nice to see it all put together. They call me Del Boy myself, you know, <laughs> and then I, I walk into here and it's like his front room. Let's get down to business. I mean, I know straight away that this is going to fit in here. This is the original Real McCoy from the 1970s with the glass liner pineapple ice bucket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not going to get better than that. Yeah, it definitely looks cool. I mean, it's gonna fit in here a dream. I think it will, but it all depends about how much. I'd love to get £75 for it. So far, I see 75 is way too high for what I pay. Give us 70 quid, I'm knocked down a fiver. How about that as so friends? How about 45? 55, all the fives, how about that? What about, I don't know, like 53? Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not even, I'll, I'll, I'll grab that at that. No. Thanks very much. And that deal makes Danny a prickly £28 profit. And he's down to one item. The knowledge still has two, but he's tracked down a possible buyer for his paperweight in the form of paperweight collector Derek. Remember, he has £50 invested in it. So, this is the collection. Well, this is just part of it, Eric. Um, I've actually got about 900 weights altogether. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's about uh, 300 down in this room okay. and the rest are upstairs but yeah. what a collection and so it, they're all so for want of a better term eclectic they're all so different for the yes. most part aren't yeah. they for me it's just I've got, if i like the paperweight it's got a place in my collection it doesn't matter whether it's worth a five or 500 all oh, right do you have a favorite there is one particular one can I hold it? You certainly can. Now that is amazing. So he's had to make this little sort of rosette of sorts. Yep. And then he's, then had he's encased it with a triple overlay. And so then he's got had, yeah, yeah. white, blue and green. Yeah. And then he's then cut. he's had to cool that down, yep. cut it, and he's then had to reheat it, yep. encase it in glass, and then encase it again in a further triple overlay <laughs> and yep. cut that. I understand you've got a paperweight that I might be interested in. I understand it's a London 1951. Well, I've actually got one of those. You have? Yeah. Well, oh. let me show you. OK. So oh. there's my example. Hmm. Hmm. So I'll be very interested to see yours right. and see how it compares. Oh, very, very different. The main difference is mine's better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I'm interested in it. Ah. Because now, yeah. if you compare that with yours, the central cane yeah. is very, very clear. So, come on, Derek, the, 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 where, where are we going to kick off with this one? You know, I mean, you know, and I don't, well, want, I don't want you to peak too soon. Maybe mm. 40 pounds? How does that sound? Um, it, it sounds like, for me, to be frank with it sounds like financial suicide. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, I mean, would 70 be near the mm. mark, do you think? Mm, what about meeting in the middle? What, 60? So, 55? If he just nudge you up to 60, that would... Mm, no, I'll uh, nudge you down to 50. It all matters to me. If the sound of 58 is, is within right. the realms of, of, okay. of feasibility... Right. We've got a deal there. Eric makes just an £8 profit on the paperweight. He's down to his final item, his yellow bowl and stand which he takes to Westrum-based antiques dealer Ashton. We've got ourselves a deal. Okay. Fantastic. Good man. Thank you, Eric. And sells for a £50 profit. Danny still has his boat bar, but can he sail away with more than the £120 he paid for it? 
I'm in Derbyshire to see Thomas. He owns a mobile cocktail bar service. I know he likes quirky bars. I know he likes themed bars. So I've brought along my bar. I'm going to push the boat out on this one. No, no, this looks cool. This is cool. This is your original 1960s boat bar. Very, very iconic for its time. And in really nice condition. What really is your thing here? You know, we do like quirky, bespoke mobile bars around the UK. You know, it's just with a bit of a, a twist, not your normal bar. What, what are you selling? Pints of beer? No, no, we don't do pints. Cocktails, bespoke cocktails. Funky stuff. Craziest we have done was in the middle of a pool on a bar floating on an island. Wow. Yes, wow. But this one is better than an island. Well, of course it is. You've got the boat itself. The Titanic! <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, what's surprising me. You're in a container. Because we are mobile, so we don't have a venue. We store everything in here and then... Of course, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Let's get down to business. Yeah. I've looked on the internet. <laughs> They're fetching strong money. I'd like £480. I was thinking more 250 Oh, no, you've, 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 you've cut me right in half. Well, then he may have a fight on his hands here, but will he get his asking price? If he does, it'll win in the competition. All will be revealed. But before we do, let's remind ourselves of how much our experts have spent today. From a £750 budget, Eric bought five items for £428. Danny bought six, totaling £389. But now, all that matters is profit. All of the money made will go to our dealer's chosen charities. So, who is today's champion? Hey, how are you? Not so bad. Yes, I'm, I'm, Not wearing, so bad. I'm wearing the shoes that I uh, nearly wore out walking around Newark for trying to find something to buy. How did you get on? Well, um, I was um, trying to spend big there with my cocktail shaker. That was a nice 1930s it was, set. It was a very nice set, wasn't it? Lovely good home set. for it? Yes, a very good home. A very smart hotel in central London, no less. Oh, was it? Uh, what about yourself? Well, I did not so bad at all with my... Uh, do you remember my shit bar? Oh, yes. Yeah, that yeah. That was very nice. I sold that to an, uh, a, a mobile cocktail service. It was, you know, he, he'd done mobile bars. And, uh, yeah, and he sort of had um, upcycled units, if you would. So mine was nice and original. He loved it. Good. The ice bucket went well as well. I went to a place that did cocktails again. So it seems like it's all drinks, this... Uh... It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, to be frank with you, I have to admit that uh, I didn't really manage much of a markup on my sales, so... Um, Let's so... see if we can drink to this, oh, then. Well, you might be doing the drinking, and if you are, you're buying. OK, one, two, three... Oh, yes, did as well. Yeah. Only slightly. <laughs> Only slightly. Well, I don't know about that. I think you've doubled it. You've doubled it. Come on, hey. let's go and have a drink. <laughs> hey, you weren't fit, you really were in your element. Yes, Danny wins today's contest, having taken on and beaten the Prince of Porcelain. And his winning profit came from that kitsch bar. 365. 368. 368, yes. Deal. Making an incredible £248 profit and securing his win. Brilliant. I've made a good, strong win. I'm now cooking with gas. Well, that was, without question, quite a serious defeat. But there again, Danny was very much playing on home turf. And at an antique fair, I can tell you, that man is very much in his element. But tomorrow, Eric gets a chance to reclaim his throne when they fight once again at a car boot sale in Essex. 5.15 tomorrow for that, 8.30 tonight for this, Nadia's British Food and...